Since its establishment in 1975, the University of Juba has been on back and forth growth model with frequent closures as well as its apparent transfer to Khartoum during the war before its reinstatement back to Juba after secession of South Sudan from Sudan. All of that rope pulling has negatively affected the students and most importantly the university as it lacked proper development for a long time. Since the independence of South Sudan, the University of Juba has been planning to make the university a center of excellence and relevance to meet the international standard in both academic and practice. As a result, a number of iconic buildings have springed up and surfaced in and around the university. On the forefront of all these latest symbolic structures is a new gate of the University of Juba, which is located at the western side of the compound. The gate, according to the Vice-Chancellor of University of Juba, Professor John Apurota Kech, is fully funded by the university and was prioritized and planned to be completed in just six months as it represents the image, the face and the values of the university. From our own resources, we um, design uh, the gate that we have at the moment and uh, from you know, our meager resources so that it is actually, because the gate is the face of university. So that is... Um, uh, we've been working on it for the last almost last six months um, and it's coming up and we are going to inaugurate it on Saturday. There's no day that you're going to wait and say you're going to do a development. So it is also our responsibility who are currently running the University of Juba to ensure that the little resources that we get uh, from the student, we also make sure that we're also trying to put them in a proper use so that uh, we improve the learning environment and we also improve uh, the university, uh, University of Juba, as one of the leading uh, public universities uh, in the Republic of South Sudan. The construction of the new gate was proposed by the university's administration to guarantee the safety and security of its staff, students and visitors, as well as passers-by. This is because the old gates were too close to the roundabout and poses a grave danger to the vehicles using the road and pedestrians crossing in between the narrow and mostly congested University Road. As a result, the idea of designing the new gate was conceived and entrusted in the hands of Mr. Alem Seget Gabrikidan, a foreign national from Eritrea who is an assistant professor for urban planning at the University of Juba. Number one, it's not personal initiative. This is a professional obligation. Meaning, uh, when I start from the gate, uh, the Juba University gates, especially the western gate and the southern gate, they are very close to roundabouts. Meaning that roundabout is the junction point from four major different directions. From Buluk to Atlabara side, from Custom to Atlabara side, from Geada to Atlabara side, again from Malakia to Atlabara side. So this is one of the busiest junction in Juba. This iconic state-of-the-art gate of University of Juba symbolizes values, dynamics and potentials of the promising new nation. The new gate is composed of an entry and exit path for vehicles and pedestrian entry through the security check office which doubles as a holding room for visitors as they present their document and wait for passage clearance. The tree standing in the middle of the gate portrays the landscape connecting outside to the inside of the university and gracing it with green, clean and serene scenery. Leading to the top of the gate are six terraces, each marking a progress in academic year, the least being the first year of study and the highest being six years degree in medicine. On top of the gate, the terraces leads up to a tukul shaped tower, which symbolizes the nation. This is the pinnacle of the studies ladder and it's also a tipping point where one is declared a learned professional and ready to serve his nation upon completing their studies. Uh, we have decided to embark on uh, a new gate because the two gates we have got now, the southern gate and the western gate, are all too close to the runabout. So we thought it just safely uh, for reasons of safety and security of our students, visitors and staff. We felt it was very necessary to move the gate further away from uh, the runabouts. And that's exactly what we have done. The main consideration was really safety of our students and staff. That's why we have had this gate move slightly 
downwards towards the north. And um, it has been built by one of our own staff as the, the designer, of course funded by the university. But also another interesting thing is uh, something which is slightly probably new for us in Southern Sudan or in South Sudan is the philanthropic uh, roles of individuals who want to give back to communities. After completion to reach your that logo of the Juba University, you have to serve your house, your home, your nation. So that tukul is representing nation, home. That is typical South Sudan traditional house, made by concrete, but looks like grass. So at least to stay long. So the activities, there are two doors, plus for security doors, for students, for public, and for the cars. We try to adjust these things at least with timely, at least better than from the previous So we are doing something from nothing to something. This is a general opinion for the gates. In addition to the new gate, another development is the School of Land Management, Urban Regional Planning and Architecture, which is built within the university. The new infrastructure sits on 1,920 square meters piece of dilapidated land that was used as a toilet before it's abandoned after it became dysfunctional. The idea behind choosing the location for the state-of-the-art complex was to introduce the land reclamation system in the country. The other cutting-edge technology employed in the building of the school is the use of locally recycled materials such as iron sheet, metals, aluminium, ceramics, plywood, bricks, glass, and prefabs, all collected from remnant and disposed building materials. The project, according to Mr. Lemseget, who funded the construction, costs just about 320,000 US dollars at the current market rate. This is because all the building materials used in the constructions are recycled and locally sourced. The building is composed of six large classrooms, multifunctional halls, library, publication offices, recreation park, outside space for events and convertible doors for connecting and separating multiple rooms into one large hall. The way it is, it actually used to a place where uh, a neglected part of the School of Engineering, uh, but it has been transformed you know, into a place uh, which is still like and, uh, and it's going to be uh, for a new school uh, dealing with land management, uh, regional and, uh, and urban planning plus the architecture. So it's going to actually be, uh, it is the Department of Architecture is going to come out and add this new department to it because they go together. Uh, and it is important. We know the issues of land in South Sudan at the moment uh, is a new country. We need you know, the development to happen in a way that is scientific, the way that is planned, uh, the way that is cost effective. Um, and way that is environmentally friendly and sustainable. So this is the purpose for the new school. Uh, it was uh, the way it is done. We didn't have funds. The, uh, uh, the the one of the business people here is a constructor, uh, Mr. Uh, Alam, uh, wanted to uh, to give something back to South Sudan. He has been here since 2009, and he said, you know, uh, will not cost you anything. Let me try to do this. So he transformed the spaces using clay materials, say from office of president, uh, from the military, and so on, hospital, and so forth. Uh, but also sometimes the university can supply some complementary materials. So, so it is actually a complete teamwork. How uh, a very nice usable building, uh, which is going to have very important function for the country, can be built from different efforts at a low cost, uh, but also if you go and see the design itself, it's a, a demonstration project to see that you know we can actually design uh, buildings that are you know don't cost much to cool, don't cost much for lighting, that are pleasant for the students and for the staff that will be using them, uh, where water is recycled and is green actually building. So it is scientific experimental building but it's going to save purpose as well it is low cost it is uh, based on reclaimed material this uh, this building that you have seen here was uh, 
all this small part was a toilet, this one and the other, the other side. Initially, we needed to change the toilet to be uh, an office because we have, uh, we have a shot, we have a vacuum in office. So the idea started, uh, we've been discussing me and Adam Saget and some of our colleagues in the College of Engineering. Um, and uh, we talked to the dean and he gave us the go ahead. So we start demolishing the toilet, but after that, the ideas came, why not to make some studios? Because we don't have studios, we only have uh, two studios, which is not enough for all of the students. That's how this building came to be an existing one. This school is late 1,920 square meters. With the current price of markets, if multiplied by $600, comes more than a million but we are managing to do these things by less than 350 US dollar number one we are transforming places from decayed area there are very old and decayed toilets and very old broken prefabs that is almost around 120 square meter all so all that surrounding area we first treat the land, then we are using the second hand materials. The material which is using for the building thrown, especially from Gerda Military Hospital. By this chance, I, I want to say uh, thanks to them. And from J1M4 area also, the one we renovate some buildings and the material removed one, we are applying here. Then forming this now, big studios, multifunction halls, four classrooms, libraries, offices, open areas, landscaping outside, to cool, and open air conference areas, even to resume examinations. All surrounding areas, we're enabling now places. More importantly for us, this is the first time in post-independence South Sudan that we are having new structures erected within the main campus. And I think uh, we owe a lot to him. Uh, this building has very interesting features. One of the things that it shows to us is that how can you reclaim a dysfunctional area and make it functional? I think we have proven that. You can uh, easily reclaim such an area, which we have done with that school. And I think the other thing is also the use of reclaim or recycle materials. Most of this work has been, uh, most of the Material has been reclaimed from building sites as where uh, Kiada Military Hospital was one of the things. J1 was another area where work was done and some materials were discarded. These materials have been used to do this. And also, importantly for us, is also the use of uh, being environmentally conscious, really, in this type of building. What is happening now is um, there's water harvesting taking place so no rainwater is going to waste. All rainwater will be collected, reserviced and used again. So this is a very environmentally friendly building. So we're very glad about that. The students of University of Juba played a crucial role in realizing the successful completion of this historic building which would soon house their new school of land management, urban regional planning and architecture. According to Juba University students of architecture, they might not have participated in the designing process of the building, but they actively contributed in construction process by engaging in physical service that was needed during the building process. This, they say, it would give them a sense of belonging and ownership over this historic building, which would be remembered for years. Some of my colleagues, including I, I we did work, we did start this, like uh, physical work, if, if I may say. Yes, and there was of course technical work from other team members, uh, all the students in the school. Uh, it, I would say it's, it was a collective effort, teachers, students. You know, when this thing started, we were all excited, yes. So we gave, you know, it, it was more of, you want to do something for yourselves, yeah. Uh, so we came in big numbers, I would say. Uh, it was a, a really good thing, we did a lot of physical work and دبي يعني جينا كتير لأنه إحنا بصفة خاصة الطلبة بتاع عمارة إحنا بنعانوا هنا شديد لأنه ال الاستديوهات اللي كنا بنشتغل فيه وما مساحات حقه ضيقة وزول ما بيقدر يشتغل بريحة، سو محل ده ده محل خاص بينا 
يكون فعلا ده حاجة كويس وبنشكر عليه والله قبل شيء لأنه عمل الأستاذ طبعا عمل لنا حاجة كويس إحنا من بداية إحنا ساعدنا فيه إنه كيف الحاجة ده المبنى الألباني إنه لنا كيف إنه يجيف وكده يعني كنا متحمسين شديد إنه ينتهي سريع عشان ننزل فيه وكلنا أي زوج كان بيعمل حاجة حتى ولو بسيط عشان يقدر يساعد بيه المبنى إنه يجيف The School of Land Management, Urban Regional Planning and Architecture is a crucial college and the courses offered are vital to the national development as it guides the government in planning the country's infrastructure. Dr. Salah Jubara, the Dean of School of National Resources and Environmental Studies, emphasized on the relevance of urban planning, which he said would ease access to services and improve infrastructure development. But planning in general uh, constitutes as a a vital part of our everyday thinking because if you're in a journey and you don't have a plan whatever speed you have it becomes irrelevant you see so you have to plan for that you have to know where you're heading so the addition of this urban planning land use and architecture will guide most of our planning if not all as far as land use is concerned and this also will will will, will, will involve the college especially when it comes to land utilization. So we'll get services from there. The national land needs to be managed first. Whether it's agricultural land, geological land, urban land, rural land, river areas, environmental sensitive areas, tourism areas, forestry, oil areas, etc. After you manage your land in map form, second, you come to plan your urban areas and regional areas. You cannot plan alone urban areas. You have to plan urban areas with surrounding nearby and far influential settlement areas, including rural and others, to start targeted urban areas. You cannot alone plan to Juba. When you are thinking to plan Juba, you have to think from near to long distance areas, which is influenced by Juba, and influenced, that areas also influenced to Juba. So that after managing your land, you plan your land. After you plan your land, you design your land. So that's why now. management, urban management, arrangement planning, and architecture for design. So that this is an opening of to binding all stakeholders and to integrate, to integrate all multidisciplinaries and to think about future and with clear and very open and very, very strong satisfaction, happiness. The two projects at the University of Juba, the New Gate and the School of Land Management, Urban Regional Planning and Architecture are major developments since independence. The projects which is funded jointly by the University of Juba and Mr. Alem Seget Gabrekidan, a foreign national from Eritrea who is an assistant professor for urban planning at the University of Juba. Mr. Alem Seget was inspired by his research book titled Principles of Urban Regional Planning and Development, which focuses on methods, tools, and principles of planning and development. The University of Juba perceives the successful completion of this project as a positive step towards transforming the national university into a regional center of excellence and a gateway to economic and infrastructural development.